so I, technically I'm a 64th Mexican. My great grandma was originally from Mexico. And I had always been told and grew up in a family where uh, we would talk about the generosity and kind of the tender heart that comes with, with Hispanics. And I always knew it, lived a little bit of it, not a ton, but there is no doubt that the Hispanics taught me how to love. And what it means, and I'm not saying Americans aren't loving, that they're not helpful. That's not it at all. But there's just a different sense of it that I really learned from them. One thing that I thought was super unique about my mission, and potentially with a lot of missions in the United States, especially that have large cities, when I knocked on a door, I had no idea who was behind it. Not just the person, but what race or ethnicity was there. I was going to talk to a Dominican, a Jamaican, a Venezuelan, a Mexican, a white person. I mean, choose, choose your country. Someone from Laos. I mean, it was crazy. You had no idea who it was. And I mean, generally in the cities that I served, if you knocked 10 doors, five or six would be Hispanic. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And I think for me, and I believe this would be a trend throughout missionaries who learn language in the States. I think it took me a little bit longer maybe to learn the language initially. And I think it's because of the mix of accents that you hear and the different speeds and, and rates that the language is spoken at, not to mention their dialect and the phrases and the slangs that they use. It all kind of varies country to country. And I love my friends from the Caribbean, the Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans, but man, they speak fast. And it, it just, it, it blows you out. And they forget the first thing, first, it was this, okay, first full day on my mission, I should say, I'm with my companion, we're walking on the street, and there's a man, he's, uh, I think he was selling washing and dryer machines for, for clothes, and we go up, and they're talking, and I'll, I'm not catching anything, I'm just doing this, that whole thing, and all of a sudden, he was a shorter guy, and he kind of looked at, looks up at me, and the first thing I heard in my mission in Spanish was, toda la pañol, and I'm thinking, what in the heck does this mean? <laughs> toda la pañol. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I quickly learned Dominicans don't have an S. I look at my companion, I'm just like with the big confused eyes, like that kind of like C smile, like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. And he goes, do you speak Spanish? I look and I go, C. Sí. And then later on, I look at my companion, I go, oh, Crane, what was that? He goes, oh, Rogers, that's not Spanish. Puts his hand on his shoulder, that's Dominican. <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> so I learned quickly to... I guess really roll with the language. It, there's no doubt. It takes all missionaries time to learn. But I think what made mine especially unique and interesting, and I would say in the long run very beneficial, was I got to learn to listen to so many accents and to be patient with myself and, and figuring it out and to to learn the, the different dialects and expressions that were within the Spanish language from so many different countries. And I absolutely love that about it. I served half my mission, 13 months of it, in, in Providence, Rhode Island. In a Spanish ward out there, I spent, it was 13 consecutive months. I, I'm proud to say I learned Spanish in Central Falls, Rhode Island, which is this little city. It's square mile by square mile. I think when it's at full capacity uh, in regards to the housing situation, that it has like 30,000 people just in the square mile by square mile. But I think when I was there, it was down to like 19 or 17,000. And over 60% of it's Hispanic. And I never ever would I have thought in my life that that's, I would have learned Spanish, you know, in this little uh, dense town in, in Rhode Island here in the United States. Um, so I served these 13 months in this ward. 50% of the, at least 50% of the members are Dominican. And we've got various families from all other kinds of countries, but it's, it's primarily, you know, Caribbean oriented with a, I'd say a, a good representation of Guatemalans as well. And I spent nine months in Central Falls, finished my last four and a half months in uh, the north side of this of Providence, where I had the, the same companion for three transfers and had an absolute fantastic time. And it was the only time in our mission when we had a Spanish district all together. And it was all six of us ha happened to all be in the same ward as well. And we had... Yeah, a lot of success and a lot of good things happen. But the cool thing also, for anyone who's serving the United States in a language, uh, typically you've got you know, various church units in various shapes, well, I should say sizes. I mean, you've got some that are wards, branches, and then what we called kind of like a zebra ward where you'd have like Spanish and English, 
and sometimes you'd have the opportunity to get the translation or go to just the Spanish Sunday school or Spanish priesthood or Relief Society or whatever it might be. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have 13 straight months where I was in a Spanish ward, which kind of really helped me, I think, pick the language up a little bit quicker just to have all of my meetings done in Spanish was a really unique experience. Then after being in Rhode Island, I spent a few months uh, down in Bridgeport, which is the far west side of the mission, right on the border of the New York North Mission and where the Connecticut Hartford Mission meet. And uh, still had the same thing, lots of different pockets of people from all over and hearing the different dialects of Spanish. And that was a branch, but it was a strong branch. I believe had about 80 to 90 members. And I think a lot of like, like a lot of places, if they have more priesthood holders and full tithe payers, they could have become a ward. But the unique thing about that was, or in the city of Bridgeport, is that Spanish branch also had a few Brazilian families that attended as well. There was a decent Brazilian population there in Bridgeport. And in my mission, there were three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. And when I made it down to Bridgeport, I had been out about 15 months. And I remember vividly, just like when I first heard this guy on my first full day in Connecticut, you know, when he was speaking to me, he said, Tuela Pañol. And just like the jitters and the nerves that came for the following months, that was just kind of the initiation of it in the field. But those jitters that I experienced then kind of happened again when I was 15 months out down in Bridgeport and we started teaching a few families in Portuguese. And it was like trying to start all over again and the knees are shaking and you're like sweating a storm and you're thinking this isn't very comfortable. Um, but no, it was fantastic to have the opportunity to interact with more cultures and, and another language and people from a different country. So I was really blessed. I still say I think I had the most diverse experience out of any missionary in the Connecticut Hartford mission to the whole time having had the opportunity to learn Spanish, get exposure to Portuguese, and then finish up in English. I think I had everything the mission had to offer, so I was a spo I was as spoiled as they come.